Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship at Hope Lutheran Church. We begin with our call to worship. The Lord will give you a sign. She shall bear a son. Please stand as you are able. Please be seated. Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship here at Hope Lutheran Church, and we also extend a welcome to people who are with us tonight by Facebook or later on watching on our website. So welcome to you all and Merry Christmas. Few announcements. Um, we will be celebrating communion a little bit later on. For those of us who are worshiping with us by Facebook, uh, I ask you, if, invite you to get some wine and grape juice, or, or wine or grape juice and bread so that you're ready to join us later on. Just a couple of quick announcements. Next Sunday, which is just two days, is the first Sunday after Christmas, and we'll have our special service of lessons and carols, which is always filled with a lot of good music. So. That's at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Then just a quick little primer. We only do this once a year. We haven't done it for two years on how to safely light the candles. So when we get onto the service later on, uh, you'll be getting your light from someone else. So the person with the lit candle, hold it straight up, and the person who's lighting your candle, you can bring yours in from an angle. But that way you don't get drippy wax on the floor. So that's your primer on lighting the candles. <clears throat> and at this time, we are ready to light our final candle on our Advent wreath, and Evelyn Martinson is going to help us. So come up, Evelyn. <clears throat> All 
right, Evelyn? So we have four Sundays in Advent, and we have the four blue Advent candles lit. And that top one now is the Christ candle, and that is for Christmas. And you see this little brass thing? That goes up and down, and you can see that this wick comes up. So I'm going to light this, all right? There we go. And then you take this, and I'll bring this down for you. There. Can you get it there? There we are. All right, and then let's bring this down. All right, now stay up here with me, and we have a little dialogue with the congregation. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Thank you for your help, Evelyn. You can go back to your seat, and now let us sing our candle lighting song. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our reading of the Christmas text, as Carol reads these parts, you'll notice there are some words that are bolded, and that's where we need your help. So wherever you see the word Joseph in bold print, that's for you men, and Joseph was a carpenter, so you're going to knock three times like you're bang nailing in on wood. Okay, so let's try it. Joseph. All right. Then Mary, whenever you see the word Mary, this is for the women, and the angel Gabriel told Mary, blessed are you. So whenever we say the word Mary, then the women will say, blessed are you. So let's try that. Mary. Blessed are you. Okay. Then children, whenever the word shepherds come up, that's where we need your help. And shepherds watch their sheep, and sheep say, ba. So let's try it on shepherds, ba. Okay, and then Donna is going to help us with angel. Let's give it a try, uh, Donna. When I say angel, the organ says, okay. All right, so here we go. The first Christmas reading is from Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. Joseph 
went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The second reading is from Luke 2, 8 to 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to the shepherds, oh, oh angel, sorry. said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel... A multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among all those, those whom he favors.
from Luke 2, 15 through 20. When the angels, angels, <laughs> had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. I'd like to invite any children who are here to come up and help me with uh, children's time. Okay, I need you guys to be down here. boys and girls, we are going to recreate the Bible uh, story here. So I'm just going to hand some of these out here. here. Okay. Oops. There you go. Right. Oops. 
I've got two there. Hold on to that. Let's see. Did you get get one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. There we go. Oh. I've got two. Who wants one? Evelyn? And give one to Avery. Okay. All right. So. All right. So we're gonna add things to the story, all right, as, <clears throat> as we go. So our story begins with Mary and Joseph. And who has Mary and Joseph? Who has Mary? Uh, okay, all right, hang on to them because you're going to be coming up soon. So they have to travel to the city of Bethlehem. But when they get to Bethlehem, all of the rooms are full they can't find a place anywhere until finally they're able to find a stable right that's where you keep animals and they're relieved because they find a stable so you guys put mary and joseph in the stable you have to kind of rub them on there there you go i think they're good all right There we go. Got Mary and Joseph on there. So, they're in the stable, and there's probably some animals in the stable, too. Does anyone have a cow or a donkey? You need a cow or... Okay, let's put the cow and the donkey in the stable. <clears throat> Perfect. Whoops. Joseph is falling down there. Okay. There's the donkey. All right. So while they're there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. So she had her baby, and they looked all around, and, and, and it was like, where can we put the baby? Does anyone have an idea of where maybe they could put the baby? In there. In there. Okay. Can you put the baby in, in the manger? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, just outside of Bethlehem, and I have a piece too, some sheep, okay? There they are. Just outside of Bethlehem, there were some shepherds watching their sheep. Now, who has shepherds? Okay, I think, is there a second shepherd? I think there's a second shepherd somewhere. Check your pieces. Yeah. Brielle, I think you have a shepherd. Why don't you guys put your, your shepherds over here? <clears throat> All right. There he goes. He's on there. Okay. And we have who has sheep? If you have sheep, you can come up and you can put the sheep over here with the shepherds. I think we have a lot of sheep here. Okay. That's a sheep. I think it's a she it's a brown a gray sheep. All right. All right. All right. Is that in on the sheep? Okay. Oh, one more. You can put your sheep right here. Perfect. All right. Okay. There he goes. He's on. Okay. All right. So, in the middle of the night when it's dark and they're watching their sheep, there was a bright angel in the sky. You want to put the angel up in the sky? <clears throat> oh, you might have to kind of press her on there. Okay. And then, like, flat. Okay. Let's get Mary back. Okay. All right. So the shepherds saw this angel and they were just like totally frightened. 
But the angel started talking to them, and the angel said, don't be afraid. I've come here to tell you something very special. This very night, the Savior has been born in Bethlehem. And this is where you can find him. If you go to Bethlehem, he'll be in a, wrapped up in swaddling clothes inside of a stable lying in a manger. So then the angel left, and the shepherd said, let's go and see this thing. So they went to Bethlehem, and sure enough, there was Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus lying in the manger. And they told Mary and Joseph everything that had happened, how they saw this angel, and how the angel told them, this is what you're going to find. And sure enough, they had. So um, after a while, they went back to their flocks. And what do you think they did with that? If they saw other shepherds, do you think they would share? Not yet. Do you think they would want to tell them about what fantastic thing had happened? Yeah, I'd be wanting to tell somebody for sure. Well, then something else very special happened when Jesus was born. A special star came in the sky. Who has, do you have the star? Do you want to put it in the sky? <clears throat> All right, there it is. Now, far, far away, there were some people, they were wise men, and they watched the sky, and they saw that new star in the sky, and they said, this is special. This means something, that something has happened in Israel. A Savior was born. And so they went to see, and so, of course, they were traveling over desert, so they used camels to help them. So we need the wise men and the camels, and you can put them over there on that, that spot over there. Can you get over there on that panel over there? All right. There's one camel. Who else? You want to put your wise man up there? Put, go put your wise man up. Over there. Oh. Over there by the camel. That's good. All right. There. Okay. There's a. There we go. Who else? You want to put? You want to put it up, Evelyn? You want me to put it up? Oops. There we go. All right. And we got. What's this? It's another camel. We got a lot of camels. All right. All right. Well, they were there. And they showed up, and Mary and Joseph said, what are you doing here? Well, we saw this star, and we knew something special had happened. So we traveled all the way here, and here you are with the baby Jesus. And we brought gifts for you, very expensive gifts. They brought gold and frankincense and myrrh, which were all very expensive. And so then they went home, and when they got home, do you think they shared the news with other people? I bet they did. So that's the story, and we do the same thing. We, that's why we're here tonight, so that we can share this story too, because it's so very special. So, oh, a sheep. Here, I'll put him back up here. Um, okay, well, boys and girls, let's say a prayer before you go back, okay? Oh, and one more. Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Yep, okay. I'll put them up after you guys go. Dear God, thank you for this very special night when your son came to dwell with us. And we're here to celebrate that. And uh, as we leave, we're going to go tell it to everyone. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. You can go back to your seat. <clears throat>
friends, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. We gather on this wondrous night to reflect on the birth of Jesus Christ, the meaning of Christmas. It's both so simple and yet deeply profound. Quite simply, a baby is born. But profoundly, in that ordinary baby, God took on human flesh. This baby was long foretold by the prophets. Hundreds of years earlier, the prophet Isaiah had said, the Lord will give you a sign. Look, the virgin is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Emmanuel which means God with us. Jesus is that little child born of Mary. Jesus' birth tells us loud and clear that God wants to be actively present among us. God intends to be more than a divinity worshipped from afar. God comes to us abides with us. Jesus came as an ordinary little baby. He had ten fingers and ten toes. And like all new parents, Joseph and Mary looked over their small bundle from head to toe. They touched every dimple, counted every digit, stroked his silken hair, smelled him, kissed him, held him near. Jesus came into this world in the way of all babies. He was born. He pooped and peed. He ate and burped. He cried and snuggled and gripped fingers with his tiny newborn hands. In this way, Emmanuel, God with us, drew near. At Jesus' nativity, we pause to remember and celebrate the significance of this simple birth. God comes to us to abide with us. And this movement reveals how God yearns to be close to us. God wants to know us intimately. As Jesus became human, we have a divine friend who fully identifies with us. He knows all our worries and sorrows firsthand. He has experienced all our human struggles and challenges, all our pain and fear, the sickness, the vulnerability, the loneliness and the rejection. On this holy night, we ponder this significance, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. You are never abandoned or alone. Our Savior is with you. You are not forgotten. He calls you by name. You are not insignificant. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Christmas tells us that we are not alone. God is with us. In Jesus, God has taken on human flesh to know us as intimately as our own skin. But at the same time, Jesus also reflects the full grace and truth of God. In his actions and words, we see and hear the full reach of divine love. Through Jesus, God, Je God has come to restore our broken hearts and souls. In Jesus' life, he came to dwell with us. But in his death, he reached even further. He descended into our grave, into the despair of hell, 
and in doing so, he has turned death into life and has changed abandonment into reunion. God is with us, Emmanuel. In Jesus' parting words, he promised, I am with you always to the close of the age. The one who came to us to abide with us on that Christmas night, he is with us always. All this contained in that tiny baby. That simple birth contained the mystery of eternity. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wonderful Counselor, love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. As blankets of snow cover the fields and sheets of ice top our lakes, all of God's creatures prepare for the long winter ahead. Grant us wisdom to care for your world in ways that benefit all your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Prince of Peace, Love cries to a warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Watch over all servicemen and women who are separated from their families during this holy season. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God of mercy, Love sings through the cries of a newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need on this night. For those spending this Christmas Eve in shelters, bring hope of brighter days ahead. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Healing Father, love comforts those of us who suffer. Your spirit renews our minds and transforms our bodies. Be with all those who face a lifetime of chronic pain or seek a cure for an ailing body. We especially ask for the healing for those in our congregation and those we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God of our hope congregation, love is among us as we gather here tonight. Direct our worship, fellowship, and service so that our lives and Christian witness may be pleasing in your sight. Bless our gatherings this week. Help us to forgive and strengthen those relationships that have been hurt in the past. May we be renewed and re-energized as we walk toward the baby lying in the manger. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all those to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The ushers will direct you forward, and as you come forward, hold your hands out. We will place a wafer in your hands. We also have gluten-free wafers available for people who need that, so just indicate if you need that. Then as you continue on, we'll have wine and grape juice available. Come for all has been prepared. And for those at home watching us uh, through Facebook, you please feel free to join us now, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing verse 1.
May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll turn up the lights and you may blow out your candles. Thank you.